Hey guys, it's Wednesday. I hope you're having a good morning. So something went viral over the past couple days that was of great interest to me. So therefore I will talk about it. And I, I actually haven't listened to the whole song yet, but there uh, is a YouTuber, Oliver Anthony. He posted a song called Richmond, North of Richmond. Um, and Brian McClanahan actually did a little podcast episode about it. And even Rolling, Rolling Stone did a hit piece on it. So, um, but yeah, I really uh, was, you know, listening to Brian McClanahan talk about it. And I'm going to insert a clip for you guys, just so you know, kind of what was running through my mind. Uh, now, all of these problems we see in America, and he is right though. He says these are just a symptom of the disease. Everyone can see something is wrong, but they don't know what it is. And you know what? People have been saying that for over 200 years. They know what's wrong. They can see what's wrong. And of course, in the 19th century, they had correctly identified it. What we don't do anymore is call it out for what it is. That's the tragedy of it all. And of course, that what it is is a particular type of American called a Yankee. It's Yankeeism that is the real issue. Now, I know I have a lot of northern people who listen to this, and they think I'm picking on them. I'm not. I'm picking on a peculiar type of northern, not just a northern who's a Jeffersonian at all. I mean, there's a lot of good northerners out there, good Jeffersonians. They were there in the 19th century. This is a peculiar type of American from New England stock who had an imperialistic view of the world. He wanted to make the world like him. And of course, ultimately that came down to a number of things, economics, social cues, all kinds of stuff, culture. They really wanted to control American societies. If you go and take an American literature class, you're going to get mostly northern literature because supposedly there's nothing good in the South. And if we go back to where that came from, it essentially stemmed from William Gilmore Sims being canceled in the lead up to the uh, War for Southern Independence. That was the problem. Sims, who was going on a northern tour, was canceled. Why? Because he didn't agree with Uncle Tom's Cabin. And that was it. There was no discussion. There was no uh, uh, intellectual debate. There was nothing. It was just, we don't agree with you, so we're canceling you. And we see that all the time now. Northerners were willing, New Englanders in particular, have always been willing to cancel things they don't like. They canceled Christmas, for example. That's the Puritan in them. They canceled anything fun. And in England itself, they canceled dancing and newspapers and music and all kinds of things. They canceled all that stuff. They didn't like that. You see, cancel culture is, a, is an outgrowth of New England America. I've said this before on my social media. If you start promoting New England uh, Republicans and New England reformers, and this is for conservatives who do it all the time, you're actually conceding the field to the modern woke authoritarians because that's what they are. This is where it comes from. Uh, people don't get it, but that's the root of it all. And of course, Americans for years have understood this. They know it. They sense there's something wrong. Yeah, so when I think about, like, you know, politics and stuff like that, like, I can talk about commies and fascists and SJWs and neoconservatives all day long, but underneath all of that is sort of the reality that, like, got me to care about any of this in the first place. Um, and, you know, this um, Oliver Anthony character is, I'm, I'm from a similar area, so, um, you know, the kind of experience he's talking about, I've witnessed firsthand uh, someone in my own life, but especially in the lives of, you know, just other people my age in my life um, and their families, um, you know, obviously, you know, millennial men. Um, so, you know, and I've, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just leaning into my audience. Um, you know, I, there has to be at least like one woman listening to me, right? <laughs> I mean, I think there is, I wouldn't, wasn't somebody like I'm a woman too. I don't know. But then again, it's the internet. Who knows? But I mean, I, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, <laughs> like I talk about that every time now. It's okay. I'm just going to go with it. Okay. Um, it's fine. It's cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I've, uh, you know, met a lot of Northerners in my time, and I wouldn't say they're all Yankees, but I, I used to joke about Yankees and stuff like that, but I just, well, you know, when I was growing up, um, I had a sense that 
there wasn't really that prejudice there between Northerners and Southerners. Um, and to be honest, like in my experience, I don't really know a lot of Southerners who are like serious about prejudice. Like they might joke about Northerners, but they're not serious about like, whereas I think in my experience, like I've met actual modern, like contemporary Yankees who are all like woke authoritarian, like, you know, they're your, you know, progressive Northern woman, you know, um, or man, you know, and they have like an actual prejudice against Southern people. And I just, I never really took it seriously until the past few years. Um, and because it, it, like, I've seen it be serious, you know, um, especially in a, a recent experience I had. Um, and I guess I just, I hadn't heard the term like New England imperialism, but it makes sense to me knowing like the history of English imperialism and then obviously coming over American Revolution, da 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 da, you know, and obviously the Civil War. Um, and I've heard murmurs of, you know, like, I've obviously heard my whole life, the South will rise again, you know, but a lot of this stuff, like, in my world, like, in my circle of friends and the school I went to, the college I went to, like, you know, I'm dealing with, like, kind of either classically liberal or, like, woke, prog, liberal, like, middle class, millennial, like, Gen Z people, you know, like, so, like, the, the whole idea of that there's, like, Northerners that, like, are staunchly prejudiced against Southerners and, like, want to, want everyone to live the way they do and think the way they do, um, which obviously is, that's fascism, you know, that's kind of, like, the bare bones of fascism, um, as opposed to communism, which is, like a kind of a trick. The way communism is presented is a bit of a trick. It, it sort of upholds the proletariat, like the working class, but in the end, in actuality, it's someone seizes the power and then they're the government and the government controls all of the, the resources and rights to resources and supply and stuff like that. Um, so I, I actually just a couple weeks ago was watching a documentary about the Soviet Union. Someone went out there in like 1990 and, and filmed, uh, workers, uh, and also these guys who were trying to start, who like were trying to run a private enterprise in the Soviet union in 1990. Um, I'll find it and link it down below, but yeah, yeah, this isn't really the coziest women's clogs, is it? You know, but that's what I've been into. Yeah. So I saw that. Um, but yeah, I like that. I like to see that. Um, you know, obviously I'm always a little weary, when something like blows up and goes viral on the internet. Um, but you know, about like, you know, who is this character, but given what the song's about and the kind of stuff he says in the song, like it's a lot more, it's that nuanced thing that you've come to expect when you talk to real Americans in real life, you know, depending on who you're hanging out with and, and where you're living. Um, so yeah. Um, Sorry if there was, like, a little noise. I don't know if there is, but, like, I'm holding my phone to record using the voice recorder thing. Uh, and I just, like, dropped it. <laughs> and so there might be a little psh noise. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so that is kind of what it was on my mind. Um, I highly recommend, you know, getting into Brian McClanahan. Um, haven't, I haven't watched a lot of Sam or Nick this past week. You guys know I've been a little distracted, um, first by Nephilim, but now, you know, just kind of macroeconomics and contemporary, I I've been paying attention to current events, you know, um, which is, you know, not typical for me. I usually get all that secondhand. I like to have current events filtered through, you know, the, I, the brain of like, the brain of a man, you know, so that I <laughs> can be escorted. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not that traditional. You know, I don't even know if that's traditional. I think that's just like psychotically <laughs> like, you know, like I am, I am a woman and you are a man and these are our roles, you know, like just, but being like super psychotic about it to the point where it's just irrational, you know? Um, yeah. Um, as, <laughs> which is like definitely a thing that's like been kind of a, like, you know, you don't have to go to one extreme or the other, you know, there is like a healthy relationship in there where you can still recognize biology and reality. <laughs> like it's, yeah, dating advice on the internet and magazines and in general just sucks. You know, it's, it's sort of, um, 
assumes, uh, well, it is a dating world that exists, but it only exists because people go along with it. The minute you stop like dating, like under a certain mentality, like you just, you remove yourself from that, that dating pool and you don't have to deal with all that BS anymore. And then you might actually find a healthy relationship. At least that's the strategy that I went with, (laughs) you know, um, sorry for this tangent. I don't know. Like, I don't really want to you know, I, I, I cringe myself talking about dating cause I'm so it's been, it's like, it's like a dead, it's beating a dead horse in a way, but at the same time, there's so much horrible relationship advice out there, I should say like, and it's all predicated on this like sexual market thing, which is kind of dumb. I mean, that's not very Christian, you know, like it doesn't seem very, it's not Christian, it's not Christian, you know, it's dark sided, you know, like I've been having that. I don't know if any of you are like going through like an ortho bros phase or something, but you, you know, if you've had this experience of being like secular and maybe even atheistic, and then you're coming back to God and you're like, you know, going, getting more and more Christian as the days go on, you know what I mean? Like you're just getting, um, uh, living more, uh, like Christ and like following Proverbs and stuff, you know, you're just getting more into it, reading your Bible more, praying more, depending on God more. Like you, you, you develop this issue where like all of the stuff that you like, not all of it, but you're going to find like a lot of the music you used to love. And like, it was your go-to music. Like you hear the lyrics and you're like, wow, this is kind of satanic. You know, <laughs> like I've been having that problem with, um, father John Misty. Um, I don't know if you guys, like I've posted a few of his songs on my channel, but like his lyrics are very like, oh my God, what, what I love you, honey bear is super Babylonian. You know, it's like, it's like, he's just, he's on the nose with it too, you know, but it's, it's, I love that indie folk, like indie folk rock is, I love that kind of sound. And he incorporates like other things in there too, but I just, yeah. And I, and so like you, you'll, I, I remember I'm kind of having to redeal with this. Um, but basically you have to go, you have to comb through all your media and like, you, it's basically like you're starting from scratch, like as a teenager, like you, you know, you need like LimeWire or Napster in front of you, you know, <laughs> like I need Napster again to like re- rediscover, you know, all this because I've ha- I'm having to replace so much, you know, and there's stuff that I just downright I used to love, like there's movies and television shows I used to love. And like, I just can't stand to watch them anymore because there's like way too much gratuitous sex or, or whatever. And I, and I've, I've been here before. This isn't my first time in this place with media. Um, I just had, you know, kind of a back and forth. So I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with that, but I do. And yeah, I mean, you know, obviously watching, um, old MD, like I, I, when I see like sexual stuff in old ND, like the last reaction I did, you know, um, it's an illusion. Like Sam's like alluding in that. So it's not like overt, you know, sexually explicit, I guess, you know, but, um, it's still, there's still that tinge of like, this isn't exactly right, you know? Um, but I, I, I know I, I did see Sam when he went to that dominatrix, like that video where he, (laughs) I absolutely loved that by the way, because it, I, I, he's diffusing perversion, right? Like the thing that that video does where Sam goes to the dominatrix, I forget what it's called, but like, like he does what I try to do, you know, which is, or I don't know if he intended to do this, but he diffuses perversion, right? Um, and yeah, like the whole idea of a dominatrix is like just so lame. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I just thought it's, you know, whether I was Christian or not, I, you know, think that's stupid. Um, so it takes the bite out of it. Right. Um, so I do appreciate that video a lot, you know, and that's, that's what I see when I watch his old content. Um, although sometimes like, you know, I mean, he has, there's so much content from the past decade, um, you know, and I think about what I was like in my late twenties and, um, which I think a lot of time he's like in his late twenties, mid, mid to late twenties. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I'm glad I wasn't recording myself all the time. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Um, but it's still fun, you know, and definitely not, at least it's not like Illuminati or Netflix tell, at least I'm not watching Netflix, (laughs) you know? Um, I always wonder about that because I do sometimes watch stuff with like my friends and family because like obviously, you know, my normie friends and family, you know, um, and 
it's, um, I think about this idea of like selective brain where you like brainwash yourself. Right. So like if I, if I feel like I've been a little too bit shooty lately, even though I, I literally haven't watched bit shoot in probably like six months or something like it's been a while like I I saw a scary thumbnail on bit shoot and I never went back it's just scared the crap out of me it was a QAnon type thing so you can kind of imagine what I'm talking about um but yeah uh like I just say it's like bit shooty because I've been like I've been I've been consuming too much alternative media and paying way too much to alternative narratives you know like that's that's kind of I get to that point and I remember actually somebody like asked this question to Sam during a live stream. I saw a clip of it. But the normie content that I go to, like, I'll go to the Kardashians, which, yeah, like, the Kardashian, or it used to be Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but now they have their new show. The reason I pick the Kardashians is because it motivates me to work out and work more. Because, you know, the Kardashians have, like, they have that narrative, right? Like, the Kardashians aren't exactly, like, totally woke like they definitely go along with everything and they don't speak out against everything but like they're still healthy and like promote like working out and also just that like cutthroat LA version of looking good which is technically unhealthy I mean the LA version of looking good is also unhealthy but you know if you can kind of work with like how you're being you know like if you know what you're doing you can use different content to kind of like put your mind like if you want to be in a certain mentality like if I'm trying to be more normie and also maybe trying to be a little more like motivated to work out like the Kardashians actually like works for me a little bit. Um, you know, but then you got to stop when you find yourself, you know, getting way too into the culture and you want to buy like the, you know, some kind of never buy a product that a celebrity promotes. Okay. Never buy a product that a celebrity promotes. I, a truther, uh, Alex Jones style truther girl, Daphne reloaded, I think said that one time I I've, I've thought that before as well. Um, wait, maybe it wasn't Daphne Reloaded. Maybe it was somebody. I think it was somebody else, actually. But it sounds like something she might point out. But yeah, never buy something that a celebrity endorses. Because they are literally just... It's... Yeah, it's almost never good. And if it is good, it's overpriced. And you can find something cheaper that might actually even work better. You know? So just that's a good rule of thumb for life. You know? Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was something I was thinking about. Selective brainwashing. Let me know if you guys try that out ever. Um, also been watching like some like documentaries about famous 4chan people. Like, uh, there was Chris Chan. Okay. (laughs) I watched a three hour documentary about Chris Chan and Chris Chan makes Sam. Oh, sorry. I'm in my car right now. I just accidentally honked my horn. Uh, everything's good. Okay. (laughs) Um, I don't worry. I'm not driving. Um, I don't think women can talk and drive at the same time. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I'm just chilling. I do have an iced coffee, but yeah, Christian makes Sam Hyde look like Tom Brady. I don't know if that's, that's not a good joke. I don't know. I'm just saying like, that's why I don't see, I just, it's hard for me to see Sam Hyde totally as like that 4chan, you know, internet cretin icon, you know, cause he is kind of like promoted as that a lot of the time. And certainly, I think he certainly has fans that fit that description, you know, um, but who knows, you know, it's the internet, it's a free for all. They, all his fans could be agents and bots for all I know, you know? Um, yeah, but but yeah, that was pretty intense. Um, I'm not familiar with that part of the internet because, uh, I just wasn't living that kind of lifestyle, uh, when I was younger. So, uh, okay. Like obviously like 4chan's not really my vibe, you know, like I was never really, but I, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to learn about. So yeah. Um, and the last thing I wanted to touch on that I thought about a couple, like a week or so ago, and I didn't include it in the last woman's squawks was, um, just pearly things. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that just pearly things is a radical feminist. I now hear me out. Okay. Um, so just pearly things was trending, uh, for a little bit. I guess she still is maybe, I don't know, but like, the way I, what I've seen from just pearly things is that she basically, she doesn't have a lot. I've never heard like an original sentiment out of her. 
or like an original statement. Um, I hear it, like it sounds like she's reading off MGTOW.com or like Return of Kings before Roosh went Orthodox, you know? So she's just kind of regurgitating like men are superior, women are inferior. We live in a gynocentric society kind of rhetoric, you know? Um, and I, I was thinking back to when I was into radical feminism and like I used to, there used to be this idea that like, oh gosh, you know, like a woman can just say right wing platitudes or manosphere platitudes and she would get popular on the internet in a second. She would go viral. And then a radical feminist would be like, oh, why don't we do that? Um, and then once we get really famous, we'll say what we really think. We'll, we'll put the, you know, the radical feminist viewpoint into the mainstream. Um, stuff like kind of like anti-sex trafficking and like, you know, recognizing biological reality, kind of like what neoconservatives are talking about now. Um, cause you know, a lot of neoconservative outlets, we're the only people listening to like radical feminist figureheads who were against, um, you know, basically like allowing men into women's locker rooms and stuff like that, you know, like speaking out about that stuff and trying to protect title nine rights and keep the definition of that as biological female. Um, that was some like mid 2010 stuff, you know? Um, but yeah. And so I have this, this hunch that maybe that's what just pearly things is, you know, it's not based off of anything other than like a total intuitive assumption. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not legit, (laughs) you know, I'm just saying like, I, she's just so on the nose. Like, I can't help but look at her as like, she's not, you know, she's not totally, she's not like this, like total, I don't know. She just doesn't seem, you know what I mean? I don't know. I haven't watched her enough though. You know, this is just a hunch that she's like a feminist, like she's a feminist. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she is a feminist, just not the kind I'm thinking of, you know? Um, who knows? Or maybe she's just trying to get that bag, you know? And can you blame a girl for trying to get that bag? You know, like if you ain't got a man, you know, you got to hustle, honey, you know, like, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with it. Like, girl, you got to get it. You know, you don't know what you even do it. Okay. Yeah. That's my, um, you know, like voice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like, girl, get it voice. Um, well, I love you guys. Um, and I hope you have a really good week and hopefully I'll get another reaction out this week. Um, I think in a couple weeks here, um, I'll be settled in. So, you know, we'll have some, hopefully have some regularly scheduled programming. All right. Bye guys.